So, uh, season six summary, those that have been following and those that haven't, all the other season summaries are on the playlist. Um, the playlist will be uh, linked at the end. Um, also, you can find it on my channel. Um, so, the aim of the save, this is season six. We're coming at Real Batiste. The aim of the save is to make Man United great again. And by make Man United great again, we mean win them a treble again. Um, we started with medium badges and medium international experience uh, and we can we basically anything goes into getting the man united job we can journey money we can do whatever we want uh we're currently at batiste i believe it is our fourth season for batiste uh, let me just double check that for you to make sure we're not lying yet one two three four so we just finished our fourth season at batiste um and we're going to recap it. So we decided to stay at Batiste because at the time uh, the Spanish league was the second or third best uh, division in the in the world. It's now dropped to the fourth. So that in itself is interesting. Um, so to consider later on in the in the video. Um, during the season, we we were, we were asked to interview with Juventus, Atletico. Newcastle, Barca and Arsenal. Newcastle and Barca didn't offer us the jobs, but Juve and Atletico and Arsenal all offered us the jobs. We decided to turn those down. Um, Juve and Atletico because, well, we're better so we're doing better than Atletico in the league, so what's the point? Um, Juve, at the time, I felt like it was a step back from our club. Um, and then Arsenal, we can't, obviously can't go to Arsenal because it's a rival of Man United, and that would obviously really affect our ability to get in the United job, which is like you know the main aim of the same. So I want to talk about the summer transfers, like we always do. Uh, 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 uh. So the first lot of transfers that happened is. Yeah, so just the last one that we, what we brought in was um, Orkun Kochu. We got him on a free, and we brought him in to be our midfield maestro uh, and set piece um, specialist. Uh, he's a great penalty taker, great free kick taker, a great pass for the ball. He can do all the things. He's slightly older than we normally love. We got him on a free. Uh, he's been absolutely pivotal signing for us. Um, who did we get rid of in that time? During that time, we got rid of Sol Coco, Coco, and he was actually one of our early, early signings at Batiste. And you know what? He was a really good player for us. Um, for his time that he played, and I think, I think he just fell out of my favour a bit quicker than he probably should have because I prefer taller, taller centre backs. Uh, then Hutchinson, Amari Hutchinson, we signed him on a free. Um. And we sold him for 4.5, you know. He played a couple of games here and there for us, but he wasn't really ever going to be a mainstay. He was just a makeshift freebie that we knew we'd sell for a profit, obviously. Um, then we get into the actual proper signings that we made during that season. Uh, so we signed this guy, Josip Sultan. Oh, um, great centre-back. Most of the season we ran him as a... Uh, Libero. Um, but actually, we'll talk about that. How we changed tactic later on, but actually, we slightly changed his role. But he, he was genuinely unreal for us. And again, as you can see, a little bit taller than Coco, right? It's only an inch, but I think being 6'2 to 6'3 is a big difference, in my opinion. Then we signed Zhao Beloso. Now, we really struggled to get him really playing much. Because he's okay, he's meant to be cover. Um, but again, we didn't really get to play much, and you'll see later on the say what happened with him. Uh, we signed this guy, Moya, um, which actually, we struggled. We actually couldn't get him registered, uh, disappointingly, because he's actually classed as a foreign player. Um, so actually, he just sat there doing nothing for us, Uzu. No one wanted to loan him or anything, which is crazy to me, because he's got fucking brilliant stats. So hopefully, we can get him loaned out um, this season and get him get him um his spanish citizenship for next season um then we we knew we had to sign someone who 
was Spanish for the Champions League, but also absolute quality. Absolute quality. We spent 56 million on Francesco. Francisco, sorry. Lido, as I pronounce it, whether that's right or wrong, I apologize. Uh, and as you can see, he's a 20 year old monster. Look at those bright greens in his, his mentals are just phenomenal. His physicals are pretty outrageous too. Uh, and to be honest, his technicals for the role that he plays is, is insane. And he's obviously been one of the best signings since being at Batiste. We then, anyone that knows me knows I love to sign a South African around 500,000. Again, not necessarily to be first team players, but just to make profit and also just kind of bolster the club. So we signed him. Again, will he make my first team? Probably not. Will I make profit on him? Absolutely. Um, we also then signed this guy, 27 and a half mil. He's, you know, he's actually be slowly become our main left back, which is good. We've took a, oh, actually, no, sorry. I've, I've kind of jumped forward, my bad. So we, go, we forget those last two that I spoke about because the, in the winter, it's my bad. I was going over all the, the, all of them, which is not what we want to do. We sold Kamiri, Dijon Kamiri. We signed him for 15.75 and sold him for 47 and a half. Um, good business. He was a bit of a raw talent. He wasn't, he was okay for us. He wasn't bad. Uh, he just was not um, as refined as we would have liked. Um, hence the uh, the selling. And uh, we made good money on him. Um, who else did we sell? Oh, we sold um, Nestor Roy Imakuna. Again, he was meant to have loads of talent, but he never quite blossomed. We also didn't give him many chances, to be honest with you. Um, and we signed him for 12, signed him for 13 and a half. We made a profit on him at the end of the day. Um, there might not have been a lot, but a profit's a profit, right? Uh, and then is there anybody else? Oh, we sold Alexander. Anyone remembers this was one of our first uh players, one of the early players we signed. Played a numerous of positions for us. He was a bit of a, a role filler. Again, we signed him for 13, signed him for 17. You know, we played a few seasons for us and sold. We still made money on him. That's a win in my eyes. Um, uh, was there anybody else that we sold during that window? No, there was not. The loans. Uh, this is just a South African kid, another one that's half a half a mil. Um, someone that I think is going to obviously make me money, but maybe he has the potential to be first team player. Uh, right, so we've been over that. One of the things we had last season, one of the things we really struggled with, as I was mentioned briefly there, is squad registration. Because you've got Kamara, who's classed as a foreign player, we've got Lu Jing Hong, who's classed as a foreign player, and we have Masa. Masantuanu, Masantuanu, who's also classed as a fine player. And we also, at the time, had Moya, and we've obviously seen Robertson, but we'll talk about Robertson later. But Moya at the time, so we couldn't actually get Moya playing. So we had some squad registration problems, which also led to people like Raul Torrenti being not played, um, as we had other players we wanted to play over them. So that was tough. We didn't have much serious injuries at the first half of the season. So we'll cover, like, we'll look at the injuries a bit later on and just see what kind of, the, the kind of standouts that we had. But we're going to look at three results from before the winter transfer. Um, we'll watch the goals. We'll look at highlights. We'll chat. And obviously, I'll tell you what I think. And obviously, you guys tell what you think in the comments. So first game we're going to look at is our first Champions League. Before we get to that today, as you can see, pre-season went pretty well. It was a very low tier. We partly pulled Clifton Barrow. Um, the fact that Hartlepool scored against us is worrying. Um, but then, as you can see, we played some slightly tougher people here and there. And we, we did okay in the friendlies. Um, so that's fine. So pre-season was pretty solid. Um the first game we're going to look at is Leverkusen in the Champions League. Our first Champions League game of the season was against Bayern Leverkusen. We're we'll going to have a quick look at the goals and we'll see what you guys think. We'll have a look at the stats and stuff like that. We lost 2 1. So they take the lead with a penalty. Um, it is what it is. Lado, as we said, was worth every penny. Great interception. Great uh, driver park. Finds Pernardo on the inside of the box. 
and they get another penalty. No surprise. So two penalties to give them the win. So they had 14 shots to our 11. We had, they had seven shots on target to their six, to our six. They had an XG of three, and we had an XG of just over one. Um, we had way more free kicks. No, they hit the woodwork twice. Their average rating was less than ours, and they had slightly more high intensity sprints. Sprints. Now, I personally think the score line is probably fair. It's just that they got both the goals via penalties is what's a bit shit. But I think overall score lines fair. We wasn't clinical enough, uh, and we also uh, allowed um, them to have way more shots than I would have liked. So the next game we're going to look at is Valencia. Valencia, Valencia. We drew 2-2 two, two in the La Liga. Now, obviously, Valencia is always a tough game because they're a team that are kind of competing for the same kind of spots as we are, right, in the league. So, again, let's watch it, and then we'll, we'll kind of discuss it. I'm just doing my recap of the season, Tobes, and then we can chat about it. But So they get the ball in, Broha, he always scores, Broha always scores, so that's 1-0 to them. Then, must, then we, we equalise, Lopez, lovely bit of football now. Um, we then take the lead, Lopez again being involved. Lopez cuts it across, cuts it back across the goal, and then Rodri finishes. So we're up from being 1 0 down to 2 1 up. Lovely ball, that lovely run. Can't believe that got across the front of the mouth. Three of my players are in it 2 2. So we had 16 shots to their 11, 6 to their 7 on target, an XG of nearly 3 to their just over 2. We hit the woodwork one more time than them. We dominated them in possession. Our average rating was better than theirs. We had. We had almost identical high intensity sprints. Do I think it's a fair draw? Probably. It's just that they scored in extra time is what makes it suck a little bit. But I think it's a fair result, actually. Um, I think considering we had more possession, we had more shots, but we didn't hit the target as much as we should have. So, yeah, fair, fair, I would say. Uh, and the last game before the winter break we want to talk about is the um, Atletico Club 3-1 victory that we got, which is here. Uh, let's have a quick look. We'll watch it as always, and then we will look over the stats. You guys let me know what you think. We're in with the lead. Lado again. We finish. Kochu, as we said, set piece, master for us, nice penalty, 2 0. Vidovic swings it in. The fact that the little, little Brazilian goal for that is crazy. 3 uh, 0. So we're up 3 0. That was an absolute decisive pass. The fact that we let them score is, you know, some could argue, a uh, loss. We had 21 shots to their four, only seven on target. They had two on tie. We have an XG of three and a half. They didn't even meet one. We hit the woodwork twice. Possession was pretty tied. We up higher average rating, higher high intensity sprints. So I think the score line is fair. I actually don't think they should have scored a goal. Um, and I think we probably should have hit the target a little bit more than one every three shots. Um, but yeah, we'll take it. Three, one, not too bad. So then we're going to talk about the uh, winter transfers, the transfers that happened during um, the winter transfer. Um, so what happened in the winter transfer for us? We we saw him, the South African kid that we talked about earlier. I won't go over him because obviously we mentioned him earlier. And obviously you know about him because of that. We talked about his left back earlier, so I'm not, again, I won't touch him too much, but we signed him as we needed a, a, a better prospect from the left back. Someone with a bit more complete player. As we was going to sell Miranda, which we'll talk about in a minute. Interestingly, those that have been following the save knows that we sold Kiki Top in the last winter transfer. So interesting with Kiki Top. We we signed Kiki Top originally for 8.5 million. And 
as you can see, he was an absolute bag man for us. He scored 40, 40 goals in 46 the season before we sold him. The season we sold him, he scored 19 and 20. And we sold him to Tottenham for 60 million. And Tottenham, he did fuck all. And then the following January, we brought him back for 25 million. So we had fucking Tottenham's pants down. Um, and in six less appearances, he scored nine more goals for us. Um, and he also came to us and took a massive pay cut. I think he took a pay cut of around 30 or 40,000 a week uh, to come play for us again. And he slipped straight back in. And he almost won top goal scorer and player of the year, only being in the, the league from January, uh, from December. Um, and anyone that's been following knows I love Kiki Top. He's one of my absolute fans. Um, and then we signed um, Zhao Veloso de Santos. So we signed this guy and we signed him as a, a third string player that can play a little bit defensively and, uh, and offensively. He doesn't need to be too good defensively, but he can get a job done if it's called upon him. But as you can see, his mentals are crazy. His physicals are solid and, and a few of his technicals are pretty good. Um, uh, you know what? He's he's been pretty good for us. You know, we signed him for twenty three mil. You know, quite steep, but he's valued a little bit more. What did we do on the way out? We got rid of Ernst. So this is our goalkeeper. We sold him to Tottenham. To, <laughs> we have a lot of interaction with Tottenham. Then we we signed him for eighteen, and we sold him for twenty three. So again, another profit allowed us to then start playing Kamora. Uh, we sold this guy who was originally going to be a um, second string striker, but he just didn't fucking have it in him. Um, from what I remember, we made we took a loss on him. Let me just double check. Yeah, we paid twelve mil, sold him for six and a half. So we lost six mil on him. Really, um, we also sold Alan Rodriguez. Um, we just couldn't get him in the squad. Um, I think did we get him on a three? No, I'm lying. We got him four point four point five seven six six point two. Four, uh, 6.5, so we made 2 million on that. Um, and we sold Jao Veloso, which is funny, isn't it, that we signed a guy called Jao Veloso de Santos. And then we also sold Jao Veloso. Um, we sold him for 12 million. He was only with us a very short time, but we just couldn't get him going, so we sold him. We loaned Miranda to Hull, and then obviously that was uh, to purchase at the end of that loan, um, which you can see went through here. So that's the transfers that happened during that. So now we have a quick look at the injury side because we mentioned that and we're going to look at it. So injury wise, I think it's the best way of looking at this is probably this way. So in the last 12 months, so that's about the season, as you can see, this guy doesn't count or this guy doesn't count. We loaned this guy here and we just bought this guy. Uh, but but Marko Vidovic was injured for 47 days. Lopez, 40 days. For Santos, uh, Veloso de Santos, 36 days. Alvo, Alvaro Rodriguez was out for 34 days. And uh, Pekka was out for 32 days. So you can see we had quite a lot of injuries, um, actually, if you look over the season, for quite a length of time, um, which is what it is. Um, it sucks. I hate it. I mind about it all the time. But Got to get on with it, right? So then we're going you know, to look at um, schedule. But before we do, I was going to talk about what we were, what we found during the season is we were doing well. As you can see in the season, we was not struggling. One, two, three, four, five losses. One, two, three, four, five, five losses until January, right? So we're not doing bad, right? We're not doing bad, right? We're not doing bad. And then we hit a bit of a streak where we started to lose and we lost this one, this one, this one, this one. One, two, three, four in a row. And I just had a fucking laugh. Um, so the tactic we were running back then was this tactic, um, which is an unbelievable tactic. But I said, fuck this. I'm going back to my Salernia Tina tactic. And we made the swap uh, here. And we drew to Valencia. 1-1. One, one. 
We then beat Tottenham 1-0 in the Champions League after losing to 5-2 in the other way. We then lost to Oceana 3-1. And then we went on a win streak, which has become the club's record. And just for absolute certainty, so people don't think that I am chatting. Um, do, 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 where would it be? Most matches won in a row. 12 February. Look, see? So we are still, so we're on 12 matches in a row. So we actually changed it to a Salonia Tina tactic, which is in the same playlist as this. Or you can come over to my chat and put hashtag, um, no, hashtag exclamation mark Sally Tactic in my Twitch chat. It'll give you a link to download it. Um, you can see we absolutely went on an absolute clear. In 12 games, we we only conceded three, four, five, six, seven goals. Um, and three was me having a bit of a laugh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're going to go over some of the games. So the first game we're going to go over is the Oceana 3-1 loss. Because that's the last game we lost in the season after we when we changed tactics. So I thought it'd be a good one to watch. Let's have a look at it. And then we'll look at the stats. And, you know, we'll, as always, we'll talk about what I think. So we open up. We take the lead here. Pernardo we've crossed the ball across. Sheldon scores the goal with the head um, and gives the lead. And now things take a turn. What is that? What is that? Right. What's this? What's this for a goal? Oof. What's that went through Kamaru's hand? This is outrageous, if I remember rightly. What the hell? Kamaru's not even putting his hands out. So they scored three. We scored one. We had 12 shots to their eight. Six on target to their four. We had an XG of just over one. They didn't even meet one. Um, none of us hit the woodwork. We had a 61 to 39 possession. Um, they had a slow, they had a higher average rating and more, just about the same high intensity sprints. Do I think that was a fair result? Do I fuck? Um, we got FM, classic FM, as I always say, and not the radio station. You know, we just get, sometimes it happens. Just gotta roll with the punches, keep on moving, believe in the process. Some people would have abandoned the strat the tactic at that point but i knew it was going to come good and as you can see definitely come good so then the next match we're going to look at is the real madrid game and obviously real madrid oh fuck it oh real madrid i think they finished second last season um let's just double check that i'm not talking out my but yes they finished second um so you know as you expect so let's watch that 4 1 victory against Real Madrid. So let's see this. Um, who the fuck's Madrid? Who the fuck's Madrid? So, anyway, they open up and take the lead to be 1 0 up. And I'm thinking, oh my God. 12 minutes in and they've already got a lead. Anyway, not even a minute later, we strike back with Vidovic with an absolute fucking clinical finish there. They're holding up. What happens here? Pernardo collects the ball. Bounces off Rodriguez. What a way to be there for the straps. Great um, IQ there by Rodriguez. Rodriguez feeds the ball through to top. Here he is. Kiki top, the man on top of the world. Kiki top. Absolutely clinical finish there. And the man again creating that opportunity for Lado to finish off. For those that don't know, we signed Lado from uh, Madrid. I have a theory that players tend to perform well against the old clubs. Uh, and as and as you can see, Lido here being the man that proves it. Almost the best player on the, the team. He got an assist and a goal, plus two key passes. Uh, and did he run the most on the pitch? He did, absolutely. So as you can see, he definitely played well. So maybe that proves my theory he has some legs to it. He, we had double their shots, 18 to 9. We had six on target, they had five, so they were way better um, quality shots than we had. We had an XG of nearly just over two and a half. They were 1.329. Uh, we hit the woodwork once. The possession was split down the middle. Um, we had a much higher average rating than them, almost a whole point. 
uh, and we had almost the same high intensity sprints. Do I think we deserve the W? Absolutely. We, I mean, the stats show we 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 probably deserved it. Um, could they have another one? Maybe, but who cares? It's Madrid. No one wants Madrid to do well than in FM. Let's be honest. Um, and then the last game I wanted to show was the last game of the season with a four three win over. Um, and this was to obviously set. Keep setting that record of the longest win streak. Um, let's have a little look, see what you think. And I was I was really trolling here, trying to get top as many goals as I could to try and get him in the golden boot conversation uh, from Jan, uh, from the winter transfer because I thought it would have been hilarious. Anyway, so we come in. Fresnay across with the ball. Rodriguez, oof, no, home goal. Absolute mistake. Top coming deep to get the ball played out to Fresnayna. Runs forward back to top. Top, never in doubt. As always, the man on top of the world never lets me down. Nadeau out to Mas Masantuanu. To Rodriguez. Clinical finish there. And these boys are so clinical in their, you know, one on one like that. And then he gets a bit choppy. He gets a bit rope here. There's a goal for them. And we like, down panic boys, we've got this. Vidovic and top. Absolutely, 20 kills have come. So here we had a bit of a problem here. That was a worrying. So this means it's a 4 3, and I'll be honest with you, at this point, um, we just fucking. So this is the 4 3, my bad. Uh, and at this point, we just part the bus because, you know, we just want the win. We was having a bit of a laugh. Let's not just throw the game. Uh, we had 19 shots to their 10, 11 on target to their 5, XG of 2.8, 2.10. No one hit the woodwork. Uh, possession was highly in our favour. We had a higher average rating and more intensive sprints. Do I think the scoreline's fair? I think it is, actually. Um, we messed about a lot, and we probably would have won that, like, 4-1. But uh, we was on all-out attack and just be just about trying to get key, key goals, really. But it was a good fun, right? Good way to rain off the season. Loads of goals for the, the, the fans and the new, you know, we didn't really look like we were going to lose it, so solid. Um, we ended up finishing um, third in the league, um, as I showed you here. We ended up finishing third. We finished third. We got a cup, you know, we got a cup of manager of the month this year. Um, Kiki was an absolute monster for us. You know, he only played 20 games. He scored in 24 games, so he scored 17, which is pretty good, you know, getting his feet back in, in the team. Um, Rodriguez was decent too. Um, Rodriguez, what did he do for us in the end? He scored 18 in 34, won every other game, which is pretty decent. Uh, and Lado, although he did obviously goals on everything, but I think Lado really turned out phenomenal for us. Um, you know, averaging over seven, four goals, three assists. He was just the workman, you know, the man that just, the engine of the team. Um, so, yeah, that was great. Um, what else did we do? We got through to the last 16 Champions League. We got through to the final, the Super Copa, and uh, lost to Barcelona an extra time, beating Madrid 3-1 in the semis. And, we're, and we got fucking through at the Copa del Rey at fourth. To Mali, which was just, yeah, I don't even want to talk about that really. Um, but then we wanted to quickly just talk about transfers that have ha happened uh, in the off season. So we sold and um, we sold Miranda, as you mentioned earlier, and we also sold Andreas Skilder. And like, he's been shit for us, to be frank. We signed him for 25 mil. He was okay first season, a goal every other game. Next season, he was not too bad, I guess, looking at the stats. But he just felt shit. Like, he didn't feel like he was having the impact he should have for that money. So we sold him for 53 million and got a massive um, bit of wages off us. He just wasn't doing it for us. So we sold him, for, like I say, for 53 mil. We have now signed this kid, this Brazilian, Robson. Um, and as you can see, he's an absolute monster. 
Uh, six two. I think you'll get. A, I think you'll get a little bit better. I know my scared stuff, but I think you'll get a little bit. Better. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if he doesn't get a little bit better. If he's good enough as it is, um. So we're going to give him a run out. We don't know we're going to get him into the squad just yet because obviously he's classed as a foreign player for us. Um, but that then leads me to this one I wanted to touch on. We have been offered sixty million all in. Yeah, sixty million all in. For our goalkeeper Kamara, Kamara, this is Kamara. Now he's definitely one of the best goalkeepers in the world with his statistics. I think goalkeepers are crap this FM, but it is what it is. Um, we signed him for one point five million. By the way, loaned him out for a season, played him a season, and now we've been offered sixty million for him. If we were to sell Kamara, Kamara, sorry. And then sign a goalkeeper from within EU, that would allow us to register Robertson, Rob Robson, not Robertson, Robson, which obviously is super appealing um, to myself because obviously I want to, I need a way to get him registered so he can play. Um, any others ones that I want to talk about? We will loan Moya out. To a Spanish division team, probably so that he he gets close. I think this year he should get his yeah he should get or get close to his Spanish nationality, which then means we can start to play him. And actually, I wouldn't mind that if I could do that. Uh, da, 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 da. That is probably most of it. So what's next for us? So the Spanish division has actually dropped down to being the fourth best division. Um, in the world, right? Premier League, Bundesliga, Serie A. So Serie A was two. So the Bundesliga has actually jumped two positions and knocked us two down in one season. So now the problem I've got now is to get the United job, I might have to consider taking a job in the Bundesliga or Serie A. I will likely stay at Betis. Because I have got job offers from some of the biggest clubs in the world already, I know I'll get. I know I'll probably be able to get third. Will I be able to snag second? We've definitely got some better players this year, and we've also got a hefty wage uh, budget to spend. So we could maybe sell sell Kamaru, sign a uh, an EU goalie that fits. With, so we we've got that spare for Robson. And then make one more huge signing. And I think if I was going to make a big signing, it would probably be in the centre back position. Um, and I might consider then selling. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is he? Where the heck is he? Let me just go here. Sotalo. Sotalo. If I was to make a signing, I could sell him. Get him off, make some money, and then obviously keep him. Or I could just sell Sotalu anyway and then play uh, Madankos, which is something we want to do anyway and sign some youth players. Um, but we, we need to look at the squad and think about what we're going to do. But that's it. So at the moment, I'm going to stay at Batiste unless the United job comes up, which I don't think it will, because they finished. Let's just check before we say, I think they finished second or third. They finished second. They're probably not going to sack him. Um, so we're just a waiting game for the United job, really. Cheers.